High West, High Country. Is it going to perform better than it did last time it was on here? Stick around to find out. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of With or Without Whiskey, the show where I give you the history and review of all things whiskey. I'm Ryan, and today I will be reviewing High West, High Country. So enough talk, let's get into it. High Country is an American single malt made by High West. It is distilled in copper pot stills and was originally released in 2019. They released a new version in 2022 with a few changes. Out of these three malted barley recipes, the first one was a tri-malt, two-row malt plus crystal 60 plus chocolate malt. The second one was 100% two-row pale malt, and the third was 100% peated scotch malt. The 2022 version, however, has omitted the peated scotch. The original High Country was aged in new and used charred oak barrels, ex-bourbon barrels, ex-rye barrels, and export casks. After the removal of the peated whiskey, they added some whiskey that was finished in Oloroso sherry casks. The whiskey that was used in the original blend was two to nine years old, and the new blend is only two years old. The High Country is the first release from High West that was completely distilled at High West. The other High West products have MGP whiskey. This new bottle also features art from Ed Mel on the label. High West High Country is a blend of single malt whiskeys, all with a mash bill of 100% malted barley. It is 88 proof or 44% ABV and costs about $80. It is non-chill filtered, has no added coloring, and is at least two years old. All right, let's get into it. I always love the High West corks. I just think they look really cool, especially inside the glass top. But enough rambling. All right, so let's take a look at the color. So like I said the last time this was on the show, it has a pretty dark color, almost the same color as a bourbon. And if you're interested to see the first time that this whiskey was on the show, go check out one of the Bargain or Bust episodes. I will not tell you which episode it was in though. That you have to find out for yourself. All right, let's get into the nose. Okay, right up front, it's very sweet. There's a lot of cherry, there's a lot of honey, and I get a good amount of apple as well. There's definitely some floral notes in there, and I'm also getting a good amount of oak in there as well. There's a decent amount of cinnamon. Uh, there's some dark fruits in there, I'll say like plums. And right in the background, there's a good leathery scent and almost like a like a nutty scent. It kind of smells like toasted almonds. All right, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, guys. Okay, right up front with the palate, there's a very good blend between sweet and spicy. There's definitely honey, there's definitely apple, and there's a good amount of cinnamon kind of mingling together. In the background, there's a decent amount of oak, but it's definitely not overpowering. I'm getting a lot more honey than I am oak on this one. I can kind of taste the malted barley, but it's not really that strong. Like if I didn't know this was a single malt, I wouldn't know it was a single malt. There's a good amount of char on there. It kind of has a little bit of an ashy taste. And kind of at the end, there's like this almost tart cherry. It almost tastes like you're drinking tart cherry juice. The finish is not bad. Uh, it's probably about medium. There's definitely a good amount of lingering oak, but it's the same intensity on the palate as it is on the, the taste. It's just an even level of oak throughout. There's a little bit of cherry um, but what I'm really getting is char 
and kind of like this waxy taste almost. Like imagine, and this is gonna sound weird, like if you took a bite out of a candle, imagine what that kind of aftertaste mouthfeel would be. I'm kinda getting that on this. There's a slight lingering nuttiness at the end, but it's very, very faint. All right, let's see what happens when we add a little bit of water to this. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Not only does it show support for the channel, but it helps new people find us as well. And that's what we're all about, finding a new audience and trying to educate them about the whiskey they're buying. All right, so this is the one thing I didn't do last time, was add a little bit of water to it. So let's see if this makes a difference. One, two. Okay, on the nose, the water gave it a big cherry boost. Like there's really not much else, but the cherry scent is just overwhelmingly strong. Like it smells like I have a bowl of fresh cherries right in front of me. If I dig a little bit more, I could maybe get a little bit of honey and the slightest hint of malt, but I could really be reaching on that one. It's mostly just a cherry bomb. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay, yes, yeah, same thing. Major cherry. Just a face full of fresh, juicy cherries. There is also some dark fruits like plum. There's not much oak on this, like a very, very minuscule amount, but you could kind of find it if you're looking for it. And the cinnamon note really isn't there anymore. I'm mostly getting that sweet cherry. The water kind of killed everything else. On its own, it was a good amount of complexity. There was a decent amount of flavors in there, but with the water, it's just major cherry. Let's go one more time. Yep, crazy cherry, little bit of honey, maybe malt, but again, I'm kind of reaching on that one. The finish is definitely a lot shorter. Um, the waxy note is gone. There's definitely more oak on the finish than there was on the taste. And it's got a lingering kind of char to it, but really not much else. All right, stick around for the grade. All right, high west, high country. What do I think? So for the nose, I think I'm gonna give it a 15 out of 20. It wasn't bad. There was a lot of good notes on there. There was definitely a good sweetness on the nose. You got some honey, you got some apple. There was some cinnamon and cloves as well, kind of balancing it out. And there were a good amount of floral notes and that lingering nuttiness as well. But it really wasn't too crazy. For the taste, I'm gonna give it a 15 out of 20 as well. Same thing, honey, apple, cinnamon, kind of fighting for the major flavor. There was oak kind of in the middle and a small amount of malt at the end. There was a little bit of char. There was a little bit of that tart cherry juice, but mostly honey, apple, cinnamon. For the finish, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 20. Finish wasn't that great. Medium, cherry, oak, but that waxy candle note, it really wasn't enjoyable. I didn't like it. It, again, tasted like you would just take a bite out of a candle. So no matter how you slice that, that's not really gonna be that good. For the water, I'm gonna give it a 13 out of 20. It took everything that was bad about this away, but it also took everything that was good about this away. It just turned the cherry up to 11 and dialed everything down. No matter how you slice it, it's just cherry on cherry. For price and availability, this gets a three out of 10. It really isn't 
that widely available. I know a lot of people who were looking for it and just couldn't find it. And I only know of one store by me that got this. So it really wasn't distributed to a wide audience, at least to my knowledge. And it had a very high price point on it. This is 80 bucks. In my last video, I said I'd pay 40 for it. Knowing what it is now, I'd probably pay 45 at most. It's really not worth the 80 bucks. For uniqueness, I gave it a four out of 10. It's, I mean, an American single malt. It's a newer category, so there's definitely some points there. There's not a lot of American single malts out there. And hey, I give them credit for going for it. But again, majority of scotch is a single malt. So if you want that malted barley flavor, just get a bottle of scotch. So the final score for High West High Country is 60 out of 100. And I think I'm gonna go without it. This is not worth $80. I don't care how you slice it. It's just way too overpriced. Like I said, if this was $40, it would be pretty good. And it definitely would have gotten a better score. But it's just way too overpriced for what it is. It tasted pretty good, smelled pretty good, finish was not that great, and it's kind of hard to find. So if you're a big High West fan and you want to grab a bottle of this or you have an older bottle and want to compare the two, give it a shot. But other than that, there's a lot better whiskeys that you guys can get. All right, well, that does it for today's episode of With or Without Whiskey. If you enjoyed the episode and you had a good time, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you've had this one before. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you think it's way too overpriced? Did you like the old one better? Have you had the old one before? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you just want to say hi in the comments, go right ahead. I like to talk to you guys. And if you want to check out some other videos from the channel, I'll leave a link to them in the end screen. So remember guys, no matter how busy you are, there's always time for a drink with friends. Stay safe, everyone.